Welcome to this special series. My name is Lola Adeosho. I am talking about sex and youth. believe I'm talking about this honestly guys I am NOT the most qualified but when God lays something in my heart to do I have learned not to confide with flesh and blood but just to run with the vision God gave me this vision to speak not only to youth about sex but even to parent to grandpas and grandma to pastors to uncles and aunts who have made the subject sex a taboo in their homes. When was the last time you had a discussion about sex anywhere? Even in our churches, this has become a no-go area. If you're a pastor watching this, when was the last time you had a discussion with the youth in your church about sex? If you're a parent watching this, when was the last time you sat your boy and your girl together and say, let's talk about your feelings, your sexual desires and urges? You see, we've made this subject a taboo in many homes and families. And this, while I was preparing this, I remember also, I had the word sex for the first time when I was eight years old. I was in a playground. And a boy just chased me and looked at me and said, do you want to feel good? Can I do this to you? I'm like, what? He said, can I have sex with you? And I just, all my eyeball just pop open. Not only that, when I was at the age of 12, 13, you know, I started reading a novel called Mills and Boons. And this is a romantic novel that will just explain, be as explicit as possible about sex. Eventually, I had sex for the first time at the age of 26. Now, you may begin to ask me, why exactly am I talking about this? I'm talking about this because, you see, the only sex ed I got was from my mom. And if you care to know, you know what she said? If you ever have sex in this house, you're dead. Because if you get pregnant, I'm not going to take care of the baby and take care of you. I'm going to throw you and your bastard child out of my house. And that's the end. I disown you. That was the only lesson and only sex education I had. Thanks, mom. I love you. <laughs> that wasn't helpful at all in any way. Now, while preparing this, I went into the dictionary. I wanted to really know. I know the act, sex itself. But how exactly is sex defined? And I find out that, you see, <laughs> some things went wrong right from the definition of it. One dictionary says it's a penetration of a penis into a vagina. Oh, absolutely, I agree with that. But if they had ended there, that would have been good. But they went further to explain that, you know, it includes all forms of act that you can do to arouse people all form of act and they did say that it's not even limited to the vagina and penis alone it can be done into any part of your body that you feel comfortable with not only that they went further to say that it includes two or three people you can have it as a group and also it's not necessary that you have sex you know with a human being some of the definition actually stated that you can have it with animals with toys or with anything so far as your sexual desires and urges and satisfaction is derived from there you see where things are going wrong because honestly speaking where our children want to go when we're not talking about any topic or any subject they want to check it out on the dictionary and that exactly is the definition that the dictionary is going to give to them so you see how the mind game starts so their perception about sex their perception about what sex looks like is already being shaped by the dictionary 
Sex is a beautiful thing. It's an amazing thing. It's a lovely thing created by God Almighty, God of heaven and earth. It's created for husband and wife to enjoy. And God put it within the boundary of a marriage. I have a question for all my viewers today. Would you rather, especially to parents, to teachers, to uncles and aunts, and all well-wishers of our youth, would you rather that they learn about sex from the playground, from the back of a bus, from a campground, from sleepover, from being raped, or from pornography or magazine? Would you rather they learn about sex from this or from you? Who care genuinely about them? And also to our youth, would you rather you learn all this from your peers or from sleepover or from a friend who has no interest of you at all? Or would you rather learn this from your parents or from the adult in your life who care genuinely about you? I think if I were you, I would rather approach an adult in my life whom I trust to really tell me everything that I need to know, you know, about sex. Parents, can I tell you this? No one in your life will love your children the way you do. And if there's anyone that is qualified to teach them this subject, it's you. Why? You nurture them up to this stage. And so you're qualified to teach them about this subject. And can I just say this? We cannot shelter our children from everything that is going on around. We may not be able to shelter them from what they watch on the TV or what their friends expose to them and everything, but we need to build a solid foundation for them. So that even when all this information that are contrary to the will of God is coming their way, they have already been granted and the capacity to resist all this, you know, perversion will rise up within them. They'll be able to say, no, my daddy told me this is not biblical. My daddy told me or my mother told me that this is not the right way of having sex. My parents told me to wait that marriage is being given by God to be, you know, I mean, sex is given by God between husband and wife, not between girlfriend and another girlfriend, not between a girl and a girl or a boy and a boy. These are the things that we're seeing in our world today. Children are confused. Youth are confused because we are keeping quiet. Do you know what the Bible says? The Bible says the church is not peripheral to the world. The world is peripheral to the church. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to wake up. The devil is gaining upper ground over our youth just because we're not talking. Just because we're quiet. We are content with praying and speaking in tongues. But come on, after praying and speaking in tongues, some education needs to be done. We need to educate our youth about sex. We need to let them know what the Bible talks about sex. We need to let them know the danger of sex. We need to let them know the beauty of sex. It's very important. You can see that I'm really passionate about this because I have seen many lives bastardized. I have seen many destiny being destroyed just because this appetite was woken up when it was not time yet. While I was preparing this message, I had a dream and I want to share with all my viewers online. I had a dream in the dream. I was a caregiver to a very young girl of about five years old. And I would go over to the house to care for this child. And when I get there, the child will tell me the mother of the child handed over this child to me to be a caregiver. And the mother of the, and the child will ask me for whatever and I will just hand over whatever the child asks of me, I will hand it over to the child. And I kept on doing that in my dream. I kept on seeing myself going there and going there. Meanwhile, as I was doing that, I was growing and the child was also growing. And then the dream, dream flipped into another area where I had grown 
to be a woman. And this child also has grown enough, you know, old enough. And when I got there and the child was asking me, can I have this? Can I have this? I'm like, no, you can have it. It's not time yet for you. You know, you can have it. It's not time for you yet. And the same dream flipped into another area where the child has grown to maturity. And I was the one that was giving the child what the child needs. And I woke up from that dream. And I said, Holy Spirit, what exactly are you telling me? And the Holy Spirit told me, I've just shown you what sex is all about. And I'm like, Holy Spirit, teach me, help me to understand this. He said, when you go to wake up your sexual appetite, where you are not fully grown, it's destructive. Why? Because there is no capacity for self-control. So anything is going to go. And God told me this is the reason why most of our youth are into pornography. Because the more they want it, the more they want more. The capacity for self-control is not there. And because there is no boundary for it, they can't do it with anything. And the Lord told me, he said, you know what? When you become of age in that dream, you remember that child was handed over to you by the mother. Because now the mother trusted you that you'll be able to take care of that child adequately. And God told me, this is what I do when a union is consummated between husband and wife. Then I give them the liberty because at that time, they now have the capacity to understand the mystery of sex and now they can have it with each other. And that's why it's dangerous. Sex is My thought said that in one of his message that I listen to. It's dangerous when it's outside of the box. It's dangerous. It can kill. It can destroy destiny and lives. And that's why God put it within the confinement of marriage where you are matured enough to be able to nurture and be able to control it. While preparing this, I decided to become a little bit practical. And I picked my phone and I called several people, ranging from married to unmarried, to youth, to singles, even to children as little as nine years old, to ask them questions about sex. And my, and my questions were very simple. I even asked my husband, <laughs> how did you get to know about sex for the first time? And my, the answers that I got was so mind-blowing. One interesting thing about some of the answers was the fact that nobody told me that they heard about sex from their parent. No one told me that their youth pastor told them about sex or they had a support group where people can talk freely about sex. Here are the things that I heard from some of the people. Some people said, I watch my parents do it. I sneak on them. That's how I got to know what sex looks like. Some people did say, oh, through pornography, a friend of mine introduced me to pornography, and that was it. Another person did say, well, I was raped. So sad. And that was the beginning of it all. Another person did say, oh, true movie, Pastor Lola is everywhere. Movies, you know, sex everywhere. We see it all the time, you know, kind of thing. Some people did say, well, through books and magazines, I read about it and I got really interested about it. And another person did say, I participated in it. Somebody taught me how to do it. You know, a big auntie. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine how destructive that could be? Because when you talk about pornography, it's all about fantasy. How can you build your sexual life around fantasy? Something that is not real. Something that is violent, dehumanizing power and control over women most of the time. And that explains why most marriages are having problems now. Because men are not getting what they saw on pornography in their wives. Or women are not getting what they saw in porn from their husband. That explains the reason for sexual dissatisfaction. Can you imagine that? If somebody was raped, that person would probably hate sex for life. If somebody was educated through magazine, can you imagine what that is doing to people? Yeah? That's what I 
That's what I discovered. These are the things that I, I discovered. Creating fear. If, you, if you're fortunate <laughs> to have a mother like my mom, you know, who every day it was a song in our house. Don't get pregnant. If you get pregnant, I will disown you. I can't take care of you. I'll take care of a baby. Don't ever do sex. We tell our children what they shouldn't do. We don't tell them why they shouldn't do it. We tell them the negative part of things. We don't tell them the positive. My mother never told me sex is a beautiful thing. It's a lovely thing. And that explains. I got into sex for the first time after my marriage at the age of 26. And it was tough. Because everything that I've heard about sex was absolutely negative. And that was what I run with. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? What message are you giving to your children about sexual intimacy? Sex is a beautiful thing. Created by the beautiful God. Created by the amazing God. For enjoyment, for satisfaction between a husband and a wife. Can I challenge all my viewers today to start to talk about sex in their various homes? And you may begin to ask me a question, how old should my youth be or my child be before I start to talk about sex? I'm going to say, you know, psychologists have told us between the age of zero to five, children are usually interested in their body parts. So if your child is between the age of zero to five, start talking about body parts. Talk about body parts. Call them their name. A penis is a penis, a vagina is a vagina. Don't give it any weird names that it's from nowhere. No, they need to know what it is. So that if somebody, and they need to know that no one has the right to touch them in that place. Any place that is covered in their body, no other person can touch that part. You know, their breasts are covered, their penis are covered, their vagina are covered, their tights are covered. Nobody has the right to touch them in those places that are covered in their body. From the age of zero to five, it's important to do that. And also, can I say, if your child is 10 years old, you are probably too late in talking about sex. Because from the age of six to 10, their sexual urges begin to go awire, begins to come up. Between the age of six and 10, your child already have a sexual desire. So it's important to have that conversation with them once they are over the age of six going to, to seven or eight or nine or ten and it's okay if your child is already 15 16 17 you can still have that discussion it's never never too late and maybe you're saying oh my god how do i talk with a youth uh, about sex yes you can talk with your youth about sex i have a few tips here you know to really help you know so that you can know how to do that number one is befriend your child befriend your child make the environment comfortable and conducive for your child to be able to talk to you about anything and everything and when you have that what you're going to do is when you create that relaxing atmosphere you can get some snack ready or you can watch some movie you know a little bit light movie that talks a little bit about sexuality and you start a discussion and ask you know David what do you think about this this thing that we just watch now, do you think those feelings are okay? Do you normally have those feelings? And when you have those feelings, what do you normally do? And be vulnerable, talk about yourself too. Because where your child is right now, you have passed that stage. And there are some mistakes you made when you were in that state that you don't want your child to make. Let your child know that your child is human. Don't be too heavily bound that you are humanly irresponsible. No! No, being born again doesn't mean it. we are immune to human feelings and sexual or Let your child know those urges are beautiful. They are good. It's a sign that your child is perfect. But what your child does, or not only child, your youth does without feeling, is what is really, really important. Go for a ride. If you have a child who is always afraid of making eye contact or too shy, you can go for a ride. You're not looking at each other, both of you are looking straight ahead, but you are dishing out some questions. 
and see whether that child will open up, you know, or not, you know. Ask what do you know about sex. Tell them what you know too. And if they're asking you any question that you kind of feel like, oh no, this is too much, I don't even know answer to it. It's okay to say, hey buddy, I don't know the answer to this question. I'm going to ask some of my mates and I will get back to you. Be sincere, be honest, you know, with your child on this. And also you may begin to ask, what are the information that I need to give to my child? when I'm educating them about sex. Number one, let them know that sex is beautiful. It's designed by God. Number two, let them know that sexual sex is, biblical sex is between a male and a female. Biblical sex is between a male and a female. Let them know that their desires are absolutely normal. And let them know that God has given them the capacity to control their desires. That they have the capacity to control their desires by what they feed themselves in, what they look at. Let them know that, you know, it, it, there's a way that they can pump themselves into the word of God to the extent that they can choke, you know, that desire so that it doesn't overtake them. And let them know that, you know, it's, sex is not just sex, it's more than sex. Let your youth know that it's, sex is not just sex, it's more than sex. Let them know that, you know, there are so many advantages of waiting. And we're going to be, I'm going to be talking more about this in our other video. Let them know the advantages of waiting for the right person and for the right time. And let them know the danger of doing it at the wrong time. So, I think I'm just going to wrap up here today. I hope you have been blessed listening to this. My challenge for you this week is talk to your child about sex and ask the Holy Spirit to take the lead as you talk to that child about sex. Now, some of you may be saying, oh, no, 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 no. I would really, really, really love to see some resources that I can read, you know, that will help me to be able to improve, you know, especially to be able to get my confidence level to be able to talk to my child. When you go into a website called Intoxicated in Life, Intoxicated in Life, if you go www.intoxicatedinlife, there's a course under that course, having the talk, having the talk. The courses are divided into two parts, one part for the parent and one part for the child. This is more relevant to younger children, but they can also be very good. You can see some nudges from them especially when talking to your youth about sex. I am excited for the future of your children and I'm believing God that their future will not be disrupted or destroyed by untimely sexual act in Jesus' name. Stay tuned. If you love this video, please click subscribe and then wait for our next video. Thank you and God bless you.